Okay, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and show some aspects of the Invisalign Outcome Simulator. All right, so this case here is interesting because the patient has a retained primary tooth. And what this is going to do is it's going to throw off our simulator when figuring out tooth numbers. Now, when this is counting down, it gives us an opportunity that we can stop the scan so that we can change the tooth axis position or that we can change the tooth numbers. So I haven't done it in this example because I wanna show what we would get if we didn't make any adjustments. Now the extra tooth here is the patient's two, three, or sorry, there's six, three. So that's a primary tooth that they didn't lose. And what we'll notice is, is that we need to take it out for treatment. So this is going to help both diagnostically um, as well as practically because what you see here is the before shows that we're actually missing a tooth from this spot here, which is there. And then in this position, this is the patient 6-3. So we don't want that to be there. So if we want to go ahead and make an adjustment here, we have to go back out of the scan And it's going to force us then to redo what we did before. So as we go back, it's going to reposition the axis lines. And we'll be able to stop the scan in that 10 second countdown so that we can change uh, the tooth numbers as well as virtually removing that tooth. So, okay, here we are. We've got all of the axis lines running down the teeth and you can see that we're missing the two five. So if we want to hit numbers here, the reason why is that it thinks that the two four is the primary tooth there, but we know that it's not. So in order to make this correction, then what we're going to do is it says, please check access and make necessary corrections prior to simulating a setup. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove the axis line from the two four. So to do that, I'm going to press and hold on it and click delete axis. So now it's removed that two four. Now I'm going to press and hold on this axis and I'm going to say that I want it to be a decrement tooth number. And as I make that tooth two four, then, um, now things can line up. So I'm going to add an axis point and I'm going to add an axis point. So now I've placed the two five, and then that automatically then knew that if this was the two five, then we have the two six, two seven, and two eight. On the bottom, we've got the three eight, three seven, three six, that's all correct. And so all of our tooth numbers now are accurate. So now we can go ahead and create our simulation. Now we cannot actually put in a primary tooth. So this is a very interesting situation that we still have the primary canine. We, there's no way to represent that. If this was um, a supernumerary tooth, same thing. We can't actually show it in here. But what this allows us to do now is it's going to virtually remove that tooth and then it knows that we wanna be moving the teeth into that space. So now we'll give a proper setup here where we're gonna be shifting the maxillary teeth over to that spot. It's given us a really nice setup here. If we wanted to make changes, all we would need to do is click Adjust Outcome here. And then in the Adjust Outcome, now we can go ahead and move any of the tooth positions around. Okay, so in this example here, we're gonna simulate two different treatment plans. So we've got to the point where we've got the outcome simulator created showing our initial and our final positions. Now, in order to make changes, if we wanna show a virtual extraction, then we are going to have to adjust the treatment goals. So when you click treatment goals at the bottom here, it's gonna pull up a menu and it's gonna allow us to do IPR, anterior posterior correction, or to virtually extract a tooth. So to virtually extract a tooth, first let's go back and figure out which tooth we wanna extract. So we know there's a lot of crowding and there's recession on the 4-1. So for the purpose of showing this patient, I wanna virtually extract the 
How I'm going to do that is I'm going to click Treatment Goals, and then I'm going to press and hold down on the 4-1, and I'm going to tell it that it should be extracted. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to update our simulation. And as we update the simulation, it's going to virtually remove that tooth. Okay, so now it's going to show the tooth with a little bit of a yellow tinge on the before to indicate that that tooth is being extracted. Now, if we want to make alterations to our treatment plan, like with our gingival margins here, the way we can do it is by clicking Adjust Outcome. So my recommendation is for every ClinCheck, even if it's just very, very minor movements, it's a good idea to actually make some of these changes because it really shows your expertise with the software. So we can go ahead and intrude up the 1-1 one, one, and the 2-1 to make their gingival margins more even. I also let patients play with the scanner. If there's something that they don't like, I'll let them touch the screen and then we'll kind of design it together. You can see that there's a little bit of a black triangle that's showing up. So let's go to IPR and we can program in some IPR between the teeth. Now we can hide the IPR flags. Now if I look and I say, well, you know, we still have a pretty big overjet, I want to reduce this overjet, same thing. We can go ahead then and increase. So if you click and you hold your finger up as you drag up, that lets you do um, more correction than just hitting the up arrow one at a time. So now we've improved our overjet. Now if you want to create spaces between the teeth, you can do it the same way. So let's say you need to move the teeth a really big different distance. You can go ahead and click and drag and pull up with your finger here to do a lot of IPR or a lot of spacing correction, I should say. So now we've gone ahead and created the two different treatment plans. If we wanna make sure that this plan um, doesn't disappear into oblivion, we can click save at the top and it will give us an option here to save this treatment plan so when we reopen the patient's uh, chart in the future it's going to be here we also can share this treatment plan so if we click share we can go ahead and put in their email and then that will actually send them the simulation so it's a very good technique um, to show how techy your office is especially if you're competing with a lot of other dentists in your area so besides that, um, I'm going to take a look at showing some uh, anterior posterior corrections. This patient's pretty much biting in a perfect class one from the start, but let's go take a look at someone who's not. Okay, so in this example here, what we see is that the patient has quite a overjet. So they're class two, division two. There's obviously been um, retroclination of the anterior teeth. And so we want to simulate for him what his teeth would look like if we were to just upright them, which you can see here, and what they would look like if we were actually able to get more anterior posterior correction. So you look at the molars and you can see that he's biting in a class two molar both before and after. Now if we go treatment goals, we can choose to change the anterior posterior here. So let's go ahead and let's update the simulation with his anterior posterior position being corrected. Now in some cases this is going to put the molars into a proper class one, but in other cases we're going to have to do it ourselves. Now doing it ourselves is not super complicated and it also looks quite professional for the patients. So it's pretty close, it looks like it's fairly class one. And then on the other side I'd say there's still some adjustments to be made. So because this is close enough to a class one, um, and it doesn't always do this, let me adjust this back and I will do it manually. Okay, so to adjust the outcome, we're gonna go ahead and click Adjust Outcome. 
And now what we can do is I'm going to select this tool right here on the right side, which is the little finger. This is the multi-select tool. So now I'm going to go ahead and I can touch multiple teeth and they all still stay selected. So when I move them, they move together as a unit. So I'm going to move these teeth back till they get nice intercuspations of the premolars. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to move all these teeth back. Okay, so this is showing the difference between where he started off in a class two bite, and now we've moved back the upper teeth, so to speak. And that's gonna allow us then to show the difference of this is his current overjet. And now clicking IPR, it's gonna show us, let's get rid of the lower IPR. There's no reason for that, especially when he's this class two. Now we can go ahead and we can click to remove the spacing here, and it will show his new overjet. So now we can go ahead and show Derek this is what your overjet will look like if you correct the forward and the backward position of your bite, maybe with something like a carrier appliance. Again, we can keep changing the tooth positions into an ideal spot. And I like to tell patients that this is a sketch. It's kind of like if you are just designing something with pencil and paper, when we actually go to design this case in its entirety, when we sit down on the computer, that's where we're making our painting. So for right now, we're just doing a rough sketch to design this out because not everything is gonna look perfect. And I think that's a really great analogy because then you can see patients sometimes going, well, if this is just his sketch, what's the real thing gonna look like? How good is that gonna look? Now, Derek's actually missing two lower incisors. These are two small baby teeth. They're not fused in real life. The simulation picked them up as only being one, one tooth. So you're not gonna see the lower incisors as much as you normally would here. But Derek's planned for an implant when all is said and done, just a single implant. So now we can go ahead and look at the anterior posterior correction though and say, all right, that looks really good. Now for me, I personally find that the IPR sometimes is not correct, that this isn't what you'd actually be doing for real life. So I kind of ignore the IPR. I make the IPR do whatever I need it to do to look good at the end of treatment. But I don't actually plan to do the IPR the way that it shows the IPR here because it's just not really um, realistic towards what you're actually gonna be doing for IPR. It puts in way more IPR to fix the overjet than needed. But now we've gone ahead and we've corrected the anterior posterior position doing it ourselves and I think it looks really good. Now if we wanna go ahead and if we did wanna use this setup for our final tooth position in our ClinCheck, we can then go ahead and click down here on the bottom send and by clicking that send, that's actually gonna send this clin check to the um, technicians and will allow us to use this diagnostic setup that we created for his final position. So if I do have something that's really complicated or confusing and I don't wanna give text instructions, I will design it on the iTero and then send it to the Invisalign technicians. And then usually I'm gonna be adjusting the IPR and some tooth positions afterwards, but this is how I can take more control back of my own clin checks.